Hi, I'm your host, Ron Knight. And I'm John Williams III, co-host of the show. Join us for the Entertainment First podcast every week. It's all about the music and more. Johnny. Here's yeah, Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> Great. Johnny. Two. Oh, yeah, man. We're live. Entertainment first podcast where it's all about the music and more. You know what I'm saying, brother? Yep. John, why don't you get people a little bit of dance? So let's just get there. Let me show you. Yo. Yo. guys are great. Yo. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, man. Oh, it's bugging my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's bugging my, it's bugging my stomach. It's bugging okay. my stomach. It's about batteries. So. Hey, man. Huh? Hey, John, you know, you ever see them Nehru collars? You know, the Nehru collars that the Indian. Oh, yeah. Indian. He always wearing his suits way up there. That's a good idea. He feels comfortable. He feels comfortable. Hang on. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's keep the phone on. What's that uh, Patrick would say? I'm looking for your camera. You got to keep the funk. Keep the funk going. <laughs> I smell something. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. All hey, right. Hey, do you hear her? Him? We're back with another episode of the Entertainment First Podcast, where it's all about the music and more. And ladies and gentlemen, I got a good friend of mine joining us tonight right here in the studio. Yep. As a matter of fact, I've known this guy for quite a long time. And uh, he first started with us too as well. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day, man. He was uh he was my percussionist, conga player, and man, he had the biggest <laughs> setup. <laughs> Took up half the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Mr. Carlitos Leon. Thank you, thank you. Glad what's up, here. my brother? What's up? Glad to be here, Ronnie. I'm glad you're on the wow. call tonight. You know, you was kind of apprehensive of coming on my show, man. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. Yeah, the show's always you have to be nervous, man. You know, full we, surprises. We know each other. We know each other. No, I don't. Time, you know? We go back a long way. That's right. You know, you're super percussionist man doing his thing. <laughs> That's right. We had some fun there, though, didn't we? Yeah, I know. The show was great. I loved it. You know? Yeah. Everybody used to come see us, right? Remember? A lot of local people, and yeah. And remember, they would gather around the lounge area and outside the lounge area. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ron Knight in the fabulous days. Man. You know, the girls were Man, I, I, you know, there was a couple of videos that we have on that. That actually, it's funny, because we looked at a couple of them the other night, and... Man, the girls were, they were tight. Oh, yeah, Kimberly did a great job yeah. coordinating yeah. everything. She was coordinating. Oh, yeah. Coordinating her booty off. Kimberly yeah. will tell you if you're, if you're one step wrong. Yep, that's it. She was all right there. Like as John say, bugging. <laughs> she be there to bug you. She be there to bug you, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really funny because at that time we had uh, Bobby Morris as our Bobby as our manager, remember Bobby Morris? Bobby Morris we yeah. saw Bobby Morris about, um, oh, last year, up at the, uh, what's the name of that place that we saw Bobby Morris at? Kimberly, um, the school? Music Center. He, you know the Family Music Center. Music Center. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had a studio there upstairs, remember? No, 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 no not oh. there. This was um, on Sahara where they do the book, he was doing a book oh. signing. Uh, and it's a music store that has a theater in back of it. Okay. Uh, yeah. You should see the nice theater. Wow. It's actually a nice theater. On the west side. I know the, I know the, the place too. Family I Music Center, West Side. Family Charles, Music Charles Center. Family Music Center. Yeah. yeah, well it's got a big theater in the back of that. Wow. I used it uh, last year. Year before, was it year before? Year last before. Year. Uh, Kimberly used it for her pageant. 2019. There you go. And uh, we saw Bobby. Bobby had written a new book, and I, I got mad at him because he didn't put us in it. He invited me to the book signing. 
I said, man, what's wrong with you? You didn't even put me in the book. I was one of your, we, we were one of your star, star shows. He said, oh, it wasn't that. He's, you know, he made excuses and told me. <laughs> He said he but wasn't he, up to, uh, he wasn't that far up yet in his book writing. Oh yeah, he said he wasn't that far up. Didn't anyway. make it to that year. I guess any excuse is better than none, huh? <laughs> uh, 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 let me ask, hey, Carlis, what you got? Um, how did you get started in the business of playing congas and percussion? Well, I'll tell you, it's a, I liked it. My uncle had a band. I, some of my friends already know the story, but I'm going to share with you guys. Mm -hmm. John. Um, <coughs> What happened was, Ron, in Florida, my uncle had a band, a salsa band, and uh, even popular English back then. Right. And what happened was that the, the day of the gig, believe it or not, the conga player, because back then they didn't call it percussion like right. we have it now. Right. It was <clears throat> conga, timbales, and then the guy of the bongo. Yeah, no. But the conga player got in in a DUI situation. <laughs> So my you got to be kidding me, not tonight. Wow. You know, Frankie, we call him Frankie. Uh -huh. So, so they were like, uh, they were, we go on to, uh, you know, so they were back, at, it was a restaurant, first of all, I couldn't get in because I wasn't 21. I was <coughs> nine years old. Oh, so right. I, I go back there and I told my uncle, hey, you know what, I can play with, with this guy's place and probably better. Mm -hmm. He goes, no, not, not now, Carlitos, not now. I, I mean, <laughs> But the band backed me up, Ron. Oh, right. The band wow. goes, hey, he's been coming into the studio. I mean, uh, not the studio, you know, the, right. the, the rehearsal room. And yeah, I, I see them laid down. And I told him, yeah. He goes, well, go get black pants and shiny shoes and a jacket. And then the, the, the owner of the restaurant says, look, he's not 21. He can play with you guys. But when you take your break and miss your yeah, break, you, can't come to you the gotta bar. go to the kitchen. Yeah, so right. I made all kinds of friends with the kitchen. <laughs> This washer of clothes, he was like, what do you do? I don't know, I play with the man, but I, I gotta be back here. I'm not, you know, only nine, nine years old. Right. So, yeah, and I, I pulled it, bro. I, I, you know, I said, you know, I played it. Uh, the original guy played two congas. Right. You know, my other uncle showed me how to play with three for different combinations. Right. So I pulled him away. I was like, Bamangas, I can't believe you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a hit. It was a waitress, a waiter, a waiter. Right. I like that kid, you know? Yeah, right. He's good, you know, he, he back in, and the band, you know, ever since. Mm -hmm. I didn't stay with them the whole time. By the right. time 12, I did my own thing. Did your own thing. Yeah. That's really funny because you, I don't know if you recall, but don't you remember? Do you ever remember when we played at the showboat with the three young girls that, that uh, performed with us? They were, I think they were only about 15. Yeah, that's the senior. Yeah. That's and I remember the guy saying, you know, they, they can play it, but, but they better not yeah. go near that bar. And they, anyway, they got caught stealing bananas in the kitchen, you remember? <laughs> they, they got hungry and they jumped um, over the bar. They jumped over in the, the bar. Trouble. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> surveillance saw them and everything. They came. They didn't fire us, man, because, you know, normally you get fired for stuff like that in the casino. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they knew the, kid, the, the girls were only young girls. You know, and they came to me and they said, hey, Ron, you know, you got to keep the girls back here, man, because they, uh, they went into the kitchen and they was stealing bread and. And bananas because they were hungry. <laughs> and, yeah, that was so and they jumped over it, <laughs> jumped over the barn and got caught. Mm, that's well, that's you know that's kind of like I started. You know, Is that like how you that. started? Yeah. Then in the high school, I, you know, there were at that time there weren't really bands like now. The right. kids have garage and then they go out. Mm -hmm. So I joined the <clears throat> the field band for the football with P three. You know, right. and I snare. And I go, no, man, I can't play one, just one drum. Just yeah, one drum. Yeah, one drum. You know, I know, I've been here, man. I played the And then you have to, then, you know, I'm sorry, yeah, right. I said, no, this ain't for me. So I told my uncle, hey, can you, he goes, no, well, okay, well, you know. He didn't need me, so I said, okay. But another gentleman heard from me and gave me, because they, they played he English music. Shot, huh? You know, the Donna Summer was in yeah, back right. then. Yeah, Some disco, eh? Yeah, Donna Summer, Gloria Gaynor. Yeah, I'm right. like, oh, man, I got this. <laughs> this one, the conga, you can't go wrong. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's how I got yeah, I mean, so from that young age up, uh, you got into it. What, what big artists uh, did you look up to at the time? At the time, I listened a lot to, uh, which he passed away, Raul, the conga player for Santana, mm -hmm. right. and Carl Priya Parasso. You know, at that time, they were my... Uh, Besides that, John, Ron, uh, there were some, see, what, what I did was, I, I brought my Cuban 
imperative. Right. And I mixed it a little bit with the English, and it was a hit. Right. My uncle one time goes, if you're going to play that with the English band, they're not going to like it. And I said, oh, no, you're wrong, brother. You mixed that up. You're wrong, it. brother. They love it. <laughs> really? That's why when I added the timbales and the cowbell. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, the English band, they don't need a conga player, you know, a timbal player. That's three. You got to pay three people. Right. As I say, man, give me the money. I'll do all three. I'll do all three. <laughs> And I, I, you know, that's how I... You think, you know, give me the money, I'll do all three of them. Yeah, I adapt to, you know, adapt to the situation. I said, I got it, you know, because... But it's the rhythm that, I, you know, you know what I'm saying? Now, yeah. did, did you grow up... Where did you grow up at? In, I, in Florida or...? In well, I grew up in Florida. I, I was born in Cuba. Okay. I was born in Cuba, but before Fidel got in power, me, my sister, my brother... <coughs> left. Yeah, we left. Before the... the, the the storm hit bro, right. before Fidel got really nasty. So we went to my uncle was already living in Florida, okay. and we grew up there. Excuse me, we grew up there in Florida, and then we moved to Las Vegas. Yep. <laughs> Viva lost wages. It is lost wages. Viva lost now. wages. <laughs> Viva lost wages. Huh? Viva lost wages. <laughs> you know, it's funny where you know we all came because we all met each other about the same time. We all hit this town, you know, and it's it's really funny. I can remember. Being out there, man, and uh, I had just come back from from Australia, and, and this was nine, yeah, ninety eight. Yeah. And and then all of a sudden, really, you know, after we had to remember it was like super duper, and then it went. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it? Uh, two uh, K Y or Y two K yeah, or something like two thousand. Year two thousand. Yeah. yeah, really. What a get water and a lot of water and. <laughs> don't touch the computer. Yeah, don't really. Don't touch the computer. Yeah, like, like, I don't you, touch the computer. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It like, doesn't like me touching it. What's that, your computer? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It went. Yeah, it went down, you know. Man. It was like, uh, and a lot of people got fired on the, uh, on the strip, remember? A lot of people lost their jobs. Especially yeah. musicians. I mean, they were like, they like wiped us out. Yeah, there was a band that Sergio, you probably know Sergio Alberti. He had a nine-piece band. He had to reduce it to three. Yeah, yeah. right. He goes, you kidding me, right? Goes, no, you, the piano player, you can have yeah, a bass player. That's yeah. it. No more nine. <clears throat> but you know, you know who kicked that off in the beginning? Here in 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 uh, Las Vegas, Neil Sedaka, because he was doing things by himself. Neil Sedaka. Oh, yeah. Okay. He was doing things by himself, and you remember, uh, what's his name? He was only a duo. He was playing with his brother. As a matter of fact, I worked with his brother when I was working. Uh, no, yeah, he was a guitar player, uh, Wayne Newton's brother. Wayne Newton. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was standing next to him while I'm working with him, and the guy said, "Man, don't you know who that is?" And I said, and I kept looking at him, and I thought, well, he's, "He looks like somebody I know." And he said, "Yeah, that's Wayne Newton's brother." And yeah. And I said, "Wow." And he said, "Yeah, they don't speak anymore." He said because uh, something happened with. Uh, Wayne and his brother during the time that they were getting that Wayne got really big in Las Vegas because they were a duo remember his brother and him was yeah, a duo. Good, good duo. <clears throat> and uh, that's what happened let me add which what's uh, what do you think was your has been your greatest success here in Vegas when it comes to music well Ron, when it comes to <clears throat> music I never had a let's say a, a band Freelance. Mm -hmm. I always been freelance. Mm -hmm. If I can play with you right. two nights, if I can play with Kimberly three nights, you know, mm -hmm. that that's kind of like the success. That's how you go. For a band, it's more it's <clears throat> more difficult to book the whole band. It's just one guy. Hey, right. Let's let's get Kimberly over here so she can sing with me. Right. You know, you can sure. move around more, shift a little bit better. And I adapt to different bands because I'm gonna start my style of playing. But the most success has been that. And knowing people, Vegas is all who you know. Yeah, that's right. If you don't know, you're not going to know. You no don't way. come here to get famous. Of course. <laughs> don't come here. You better be famous already. Funny how. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you got to know. No, for real, John. You have to know people. You do. Yeah. You do. Ron gave me, uh, uh, well, they know. Ron gave me the opportunity, John, because George told him about me. Remember? Yeah, that's right. That. Then when I was at the show, George they asked me, George Doty, right? Doty, yeah. They, my friend goes, you know, you know, how'd you, how, how'd you get the gig with Ron? 
as a two torch. Yeah. But see, you have to know. Yeah, the next to know. And that's what we need now. Yeah, you do really need <laughs> Because there's enough for everybody. There's enough for everybody. Of course. But, but see, a lot of them got selfish. You know, they got selfish. Because when, you know, you gotta remember, when we first came here, there was still a lot of money being paid for entertainment. Well, yeah. When uh, they changed after 2000, a lot of that changed, you know. Uh, there's still great musicians here, but you know, they, they, I think they, we all feel cheated because you spend a lot of time in your life yeah. learning your craft and yeah. all of a sudden somebody says, yeah, I'll give you 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Well, back, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut yeah. Back then, and there was a, you remember the brewery here? Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't my, we've been with the band and I told the guy, well, if you want to ask, go ahead. You talking about Gordon Beers? No, the, the brewery. The Monte Carlo? Oh, at the Monte Carlo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a good gig there. The, yeah. And then the, the, there was another, uh, it was a little restaurant and bar. I forgot what it's called. It was a hot place here in Vegas in the 90s. You mean inside Monte Carlo? No, no, no. And the, no, and I think it was <coughs> south of Flamingo or something. It was a, I forgot the name of it. Oh, I know. We were just went past it. The, and you said that S -R -O -S -R -O yes, yes. S R O. That, yeah, that place yeah. right there. Yeah. We, my, when you're talking about, you know, people didn't want to pay. We went in there and the guy it was a five piece band. And then the girl said, No, you know, we can play your Friday, Saturday. But then the guy says, Well, I'll give you it was very, very low money. Yeah, right. And we almost had but I blew it. <laughs> I says, dude. Because I knew that he had the money. Yeah. And we were a good band. And if you have a good band, they're going to drink. Yeah, right. And that's where you make your money. Right. I, you know? Yeah. So it's I said, dude, deal. really? You're going to give us this? I'll tell you what, I can pick up Ken downtown and make more money. <laughs> and you can. And he's like, get out of here. I'm like, no. <laughs> I told the girl, let's go. Because you, if you low ball, you're going to lose. Yeah, that's right. You're going to lose. Bobby Morris told me that a long time ago. He said, hey, man. He said, look, I'll Bobby tell you Morris. one thing. If you go in low balling, that's where you're gonna be for the rest of the time. Yeah, you're right about that. Yep. Yeah, you go low ball and you you you're done. It, it hurts the other musician. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Does now let me ask you something. What do you think that we as a group of musicians can do to expedite some fairness in what venues are coming back today? And how can we get other musicians to get on board? Very good question. Wow. Now you really put me on the spot. No. Yeah, it's, it's monster. But it's a good question. <clears throat> well, like you said, to help each other, that's the key. Mm -hmm. That's that's number one. If I play in a venue and it's good, you can always say, or the the, the person in charge of the band. Hey, listen, I have a friend that's in with Ron Knight. He's got a nice show. See, we're mm -hmm. helping it. And then Ron comes in, then you, the next person. I, I'm just saying. You no, know. no, no, no. I, no, I, I get where you're coming from. I think this, and I, I don't really want to call these guys out, but you know that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and that is that we always, they always try to get these guys that are between us yes. and the venue owner. Yes. And that is the agent. That's the problem. That's where the problem is. Yeah. yeah. So I think what we're gonna have to do <laughs> is move the agent out of there, man. Sometimes you have to do that. Hmm? Sometimes you have to do that. Yeah, some ball players do it, free agent. Huh? Ball players. Oh do yeah, it. they just go free they agent. No, you know, I'll make more money without this guy. No. Yeah. You know, they'll they'll sign him up if he's good. Yeah, yeah of that's course. right. You always jump the same time. Yeah. That? So uh, have to tell you. Wait a second. Oh, I'm sorry. oh my God! I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh I can't believe that shit. Sorry, Tron. Oh my God! Fool you! Fool! It's not April, but pretty close. Yeah, that's Johnny. He has a funny guy. Oh boy. Oh my god. You didn't see that coming, come on. Let me 
what you say? No more pasta for him. I really put this <laughs> and busted his ass on my show. Oh boy. I was getting married. <laughs> I, like, oh. I was going to use the word <laughs> We all knew about it. They all knew about it. <laughs> wow, yeah. Huh? You're we like my Facebook too. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say you. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's why I told you, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the entertainment first. Podcast. I think that's what, what John was trying to say was, was he just dead? Yeah. No more agent. <laughs> <laughs> but he said it in a different in a different oh, way. Unbelievable. Well, that way. That was good. That was good. That guy is sick. <laughs> that was bullshit, right? I, mean, I wish I saw your face. I, you that I, I, I wonder what your face went when you were there. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. We'll give, you, we'll give you that. You got me on that, boy. I got punked. <laughs> okay. I did too, but punked uh, all out. <laughs> that's all right. Wrong with the um, go ahead. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned in this industry watch, since you've been in one The lesson? Well, <clears throat> a lot of lessons, but... <laughs> some reality. You know, let, let me ask you something. <clears throat> now that you... Because I want your point of view, and it's part of what you're asking about the right. lesson. If I invite you to a venue to go see a band, and you go, hey, you enjoy the... you have a drink, you see the band, and, you, and then you just look at the place and is it me or some people will say, hey, this is a nice place for us to play too. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. You know, because you're helping your phone. Sure. But like you said, you have to be careful not to step on the other. I mean, you can do it. It helps right. the, 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 the <coughs> musicians. Mutation. But, you know, it's, if you have Friday and Saturday and Sunday and they want to bring me there Sunday, See, I'm, I'm bumping you one day. Right. Because they want to put me in there Sunday. Right. But you had three days. Right. That's what I'm saying. So you are you asking me a question how you should deal with yeah, that? Yeah, how yeah. Um, you you you've been in the business. Yeah. Part. I here's what I've here's what I've learned. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, Oh yeah, but see the thing the difference between the difference between us <clears throat> and I won't I don't wanna say them, but anybody that let's say would just say, Okay, I'm gonna do that, right? Right. And that is, put, try to get the gig too as well. <clears throat> Here's what I've learned. In America and in other countries that I've been in, there's a thing called free enterprise. Because of our moralistic views is what we run on. Right. We're running on that moralistic view. Hey, he's my buddy. He wouldn't do this to me. Right. Okay. And in certain terms, I think that is really, I think it's cool. To parallel something that happened to me in Tasmania, in Australia, where I took a full band to a casino where we had a really good gig. All expenses paid. The guys, well, they stuck a knife in my back. And they ended up negotiating the gig for less money, but they took it. In the end, I had to think about it. And I thought to myself, you know what? That was my fault. Even though it was a lot of money, I, I, I don't even want to tell you how much money I lost. But in the end, I had, I had to blame myself. Because as soon as you set something up, or as soon as you business-wise, this is business, right. not personal, you know, not a personal thing. But as soon as you set something up or you want to take somebody down to some place, you can't assume that they're going to be your friend if they have some opportunity that's coming out of it or if they have a chance of an opportunity. You have to detail that to them right in, in the beginning. Hey, man, I'm going to take you down here. I know you got your band. I know this is what you do. But look, man, if something happens for you in this place, you know, I want you to reciprocate. You understand what I mean? That's good, yeah. And that understanding has to come before you that take the person down there because, you know, look, we do have friends, but we can lose them based on business. And I tell everybody, hey, look, man, you know, like with, with John, John will tell you. I said, John, I would like you to be my co-host. <clears throat> but Dick, man, this is where we're coming from. Anything happens for you down there, 
you know, don't don't leave it behind. You know, don't leave who, who brought you there behind. Because there's a lot of that in, in Las Vegas. Right. Las Vegas is like that. You know, that is what it is. Yeah. You have to accept it. So if you're going to be, if you're going to run your music as a business, there's a difference between music and the music business. Music business don't have any feelings because everybody's trying to survive in this yeah. little pot. Yeah. And as you know, as you said earlier, um, you got to know somebody. So if you come out of town, you, and it's a friend of yours, he comes out of town, he don't know nobody. The only chance he's got is you. Yeah. That makes sense? Yes, it does. So I'm just saying that I blame, if I lose something, if I lose a gig, and I, and I haven't set it up properly, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. Okay, that doesn't mean I'm going to turn him on to anything else, because now I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly so, so we run on morals, whereas the businessman, he don't run on morals, man. Yeah. He's running on, hey, I got a gig, man. And he's, worried, he's just thinking about the money of survival. Yeah. And so that's why I try to tie everything up now. In the, the industry is not nice. You know. No. It's not a nice industry. And now it's very bad. That's right. And now they oh, everybody, even even the the higher ups, have you noticed they've gone underground? You don't hear you know I mean I saw Tom Jones because he liked to sing, but <clears throat> you see Tom Jones, you see a few people out there, but a lot of people almost like they don't want to be in the business. You know. Yes. So but I just think that when you when you're dealing with stuff that is a business, and that's how you're trying to run the music business, then you can't really have that no. much feeling, you know, in, in terms of, you should know that he's going to try to get a gig if he's a musician, you know, friend or no friend, right? right. if he likes the video, right. you yeah. know, now you can, you, I'm sorry, I'll let you know. now I, if you take me to a venue, and I'll walk in there, and I see it, I would automatically call you and call you and call you and say, hey, Carlitos, let's go down and see if we can't work something out. Okay? That's how I do it. Yes. Okay. I got called to a venue uh, a few days ago. Beautiful venue. And the guy who called me down there, I've been knowing him for a long time. And I said to him, I said, man, let us get together and do something down here. Right. And I call him. Now, if they don't respond, if they actually don't respond, I will leave a message. Hey, man, you ain't responding to me. I'm going to go down there. You, I, I'm inviting you to come. They don't respond. I'm going. You understand what I mean? You got a t-shirt, yeah. But I do give them that courtesy that first, right, to right. say, hey, you know, come on, man. You know, you took me down here. I don't want to yeah. blindside you on that. Right, right. And another thing, you know, being in the industry <clears throat> since the early 80s, you know, as a manager, right on the record label and dealing with bands all these years you know i see that a lot when you're bringing in a band or have a band and another band is open and how sometimes they start fighting between each other too trying to get that gig and try to become <laughs> yeah. headliner and that even though you're the opener it's tough you know yeah. see because th there's a little bit of, of of if you see the there's a difference there's, there's two sides to that mm -hmm. I, I agree with you right. Right. <clears throat> Sometimes it's okay because I see that good. I was talking to a, a good friend of mine. Her name's Lori, and she was like, "Well, she goes to other gigs to support her friends, yes. which is good, right?" Let's say you go to a venue, a brand new restaurant, <coughs> doesn't have that much business, right? Doesn't have that much client, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah people, audience, the, the bar, two or three people. So the guy wants to do something. So you bring in, a, you know, a, let's say a three piece, and they liked it, and hey, you know, and it's a hit, and then the the owner or the booker could say, hey, let, 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 this, this is let's good. look for it's another cool. band. They might ask, hey, do you know? Another? Yeah, I know, Rock Knight, I know, mm -hmm. Kimberly, they mm -hmm. own that, you know, the three piece, four piece, whatever you want, or or, or solo, right? That would help. Like we were talking at the time that yeah, we're on now. now. Yeah. Oh, you're saying that would be yeah, that would that would be okay now. for now. Yes. 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 Not I say agree. hey, don't come on venue because I'm there. You know. Right. Hey, come on down. <clears throat> you know, 
mingle with the, the no, you're right. or the owner, yeah. helping each other. You might get lucky and say, what do you do? Well, oh, I, I say, and I play guitar. Oh, okay, well, I need somebody here. See, that that's fair. Right? Yeah. Because you're supporting. You get the that's gig right. because if I support, run. I yeah. think that's the way to go. That's the, uh, yes. I, I, was, I was just giving you. My friend what, gave me that advice. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just giving you the scenario of what people are doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's, the, that's what people normally do. They go, okay, I'm going down here. Then. When you're not looking, they go and <laughs> they go and try to steal the gig. Take the apple I, from the. I table. had a, I had a guy tell me, uh, there's a place on Flamingo way down. You know, remember the keyboard player? I forget his name, but you know him if I if I told his name. But the first thing he said to me was, "Man, come on down to the place." But he was scared to have me come to the place because he was scared that I would go do that. I would never do that. You know, go down the gig and say, "Oh man, you can hire me. You don't have to have this guy." You know what I mean? And it, it was just his mindset. He was just in fear. He had he had experienced that quite a bit, where yeah. people would go. He he bring them down, and then they go and talk to the guy and say, "Hey man, I can do what he does. How often can I?" You know. Yeah. That's, and that's so, the thing. but I agree. That's that's how it should be. The way you're saying, and that is, hey, come on down, man. You know, because I got. I got two nights here, I got three nights, and when I'm not here, man, maybe you right. can fill in or something. Yes, I, you yes. know what I mean? Yes, or, or you get five different clubs and rotate people. You think about all the clubs that are here. If you took every band, and every band, even in Australia, I say this all the time, there are so many clubs that if you took every band that you had there, all you'd have to do is rotate them. Okay, they got three nights here. You move them to another place. Mm -hmm. Another three nights, somebody else come in. Yeah, or whatever. You know, even if you did four nights, all exactly. they have to you do is rotate. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where they go. Just send them there. But that's not the problem. That I believe amongst musicians that would happen. But you got jive time agents in the middle who want to have all of yeah, the money all themselves. The money for all that. And yeah. you know, I'll tell you what's what's crazy is that I booked a band from here down to LA at the Whiskey of Go Go. That was a Trident, was it? Yeah, it was one of the bands. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they were trying to book themselves back in there, and, stuck up, and it's like, really? Yeah. Wait a second, I'm the one who got you the gig. Let <laughs> me get you back in. I know the owner, Mario. Mm -hmm. You know, let me get you in. And now all of a sudden, they're trying to go because I got them there. Yeah. In other places, they're trying to call behind me. Yeah, see, the, and that's what a big problem. Yeah, they're taking food, <coughs> food out of your plate. Yep. Yeah, so I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't take the bananas. There you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. Thanks, Ron, for explaining that. That's, no, no, I wanted no. to hear your input. So right over. You know. Um, if you had to to talk to some young kids, man, and tell them about this industry, what would you say to them about the industry? and how they should approach getting into it. Well, let's see, if they're going to get in the industry, <clears throat> I think one of the key words is try to be loyal, loyalty. You know, because sometimes you, you get in the business, right, let's say you have your five-piece band, for example, mm -hmm. the three, three of them are big dogs, you know, yeah. heavyweight, and two are kind of, uh, mm -hmm. so hey, you know, we're going to have to do something about Jose and Pedro over here, <laughs> because they're not pulling you know, away. Pulling yeah. Yeah. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> so that's what, the, they have to learn that, they have to either, you know, talk to them or give them a chance. Sometimes, you know, but actually that gentleman you said with, uh, earlier, the the agent, Bobby, Bobby Morris, he told me one time, long time mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. He told me and another girl that was singing, he said, when you come to rehearsal, it's to rehearse. Right. Rehearsal is not to practice. That's right. You go to rehearsal, you get your, you know, mm -hmm. well, to rehearse. Now, oh, wait a minute. No. When you get there, it's to rehearse. It's not rehearse. a practice session. That's right. Because then you're losing, if you have to play a studio. Yeah, that's you're right. You're going to practice in the studio? No, it's to, it's to for rehearse. Yeah. Exactly. It. You know what I'm saying? That's the, so that's what I would tell the new generation. You know, generation. you have to think exactly what you want to do. Mm. Because sometimes when you, you know, they'll start here or they want to do DJ or they want to play the drum. Yeah, right. So they have to set goals. <laughs> See exactly which way are you going to go. 
Mm -hmm. And if you have friends that help you, be mm -hmm. loyal to them. You know, they started with you. You know, what gets me sometimes is bands grow, and uh, they, then all of a sudden one band member wants to take over. That's, yes. Which is a big th thing that's happened with some major groups I've been around, and it's like they finally got rid of the lead singer. Or well, other you know, things. yeah. That's, yeah that's <laughs> so, you know, it's like, well, also, hey, um, in terms of bands, I found out, I guess in some bands it works, but it doesn't work for a long time, long period of time. And all you have to do is look at some of the the really, really big professionals. You can look at the Commodores, you can look at the Beatles, you can look at Supremes, you can look at all. There is always going to be somebody in that band that works harder than anyone else. I find that democracy in a band only works to a certain extent. Because when you give everybody the same rights in that band, then you start to have conflict. I think Earth, Wind and Fire was so good because Maurice White was the main dude. He was the main guy yeah. who ran the band. You have to have somebody that's going to lead that band, not only uh, in the entertainment side of it, but the business side of it as well. Because otherwise they will never get satisfied. I remember hearing, uh, uh, was it uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates say, it was never about money with them. Because they had enough, they had enough. They right, know. Right. But they people want to do different things when they have, they get to a certain point. They just want to do different things. It's got exactly. nothing to do with how he feels about you, you know, or how he feels about you or me. It's like I've done this and I really want to try to do something else, you know. Supremes was an example, you know. She had come to the point where she felt that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Look at the Commodores. The, the Jackson too. Jacksons, you know. Michael's and the Beatles, you know. <laughs> the Beatles, you know. All you know, big groups. Even even the Rolling Stones, uh, Mick Jagger tried it. Right. Remember yeah, he yeah, broke yeah, up yeah, with yeah, them. Yeah, that's but he, true. he he found that I think it wasn't because he couldn't make it on his own, but I think he he found that it was just more comfortable for him to stay with the Rolling Stones. Because they knew each other. Yeah. Because the grass ain't always green on the other side. Yeah. You know. Let's do that. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Entertainment First podcast, where it's all about the music and more. We're here talking with the one and only Mr. Carlos Carlitos, Carlitos. Leon. <laughs> and <laughs> our famous percussionist. We'll be right back in a few minutes, right after this message. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the one and only Carlitos Leon, percussionist. Uh, John, you have the first question and I'll wrap it up with the last question uh, with uh, Carlitos. Sure. Uh, so, what do you have going on now with uh, a band or what? Uh, John, right now I play off and on with three bands because not all the time they need percussion. So, when the first band doesn't need it, I might be with the second. Right. If the second with the, I'm with the third. See what I'm saying? But my main band that I play with is El Caliente, Joe Bato. Okay. That's mainly the main the prior band. The the other ones is if they have a party or this or a little venue or like that, I saw you with with uh, Malar. Malar Jackson. Yeah. He'll call me hey, Carlos. You know what I'm saying? Because when they bid, the owner. That's another thing. You know, <laughs> they want to see the check is for five people, not four. Yeah. Carlitos, can you come down and help? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So if you had a horn. Or, or a keyboard, or see, you know what I'm saying? That's the, uh, that's how they do it. That's why you know. So, right now I, I'm with Caliente, but as things you know they're slow, we're picking up. You know, we we got uh, some some uh, how do you say it? Some bids for New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Do yeah. you have anything between now and then, or? Uh, no, some amphitheater gigs. Because right now, right. Ron, since it's outside, it's most, outside, yeah, yeah, yeah it's more safe. So the amphitheater, <clears throat> a lot of these, like uh, uh, jazz in the park, right. Right. you know Woody Wood, yeah, so, so you yeah, know, Woody Woods, yeah. so that, that you know, it's not very good pay, the the, the theaters, but the, like Ron will say, they do it to keep the ball rolling right. until things pick up. Right, we need to do that because even though it's not many people there and not good pay because they're 
they're not bringing in the full crowd. No, right. You exactly. know, they're taking a cut, but then you, I mean, you are, you are but you're bringing in at least something. Oh, yeah. Then nothing. The, the park is pretty full. <clears throat> uh, when you, when they hear the music, you know, under the, Right. Half moon or whatever, they, the people got, you know, they started again. Yeah, this, you know, and then, you know, they don't have to be because they keep their distance because it's, you know, in the grass, you know, and they, and now it's a lot cooler. So, yeah. so it, it'll, it, it'll, you, you feel, yeah. yeah it'll go down because it's cold. Exactly. You know, and then you come back in the, in the summertime. It's like that everywhere. Yeah. You know, in the overseas, it's the same. It's the same um, thing, right? I, I think, I don't know, you, you, you expound on this for me, please. Um, I, I've, I've started this thing like a coalition, okay? I just think that a lot of people will, a lot of musicians and singers and I don't care what you do in entertainment, we should have a coalition. coalition. And that coalition is to help each other stay in this industry, especially if you love it, if you love it. Because it's obvious that we're not in it for the, for the money all the time. We just like playing, you know? I love money when I make it, but I don't always make money. I've made a lot of money. I've made no money. I've made some money, you know. But if I had to do this for the money, I probably would have quit a long time ago. So, but I think if we can get a coalition, oh, that's, that's a good you know, thousands of musicians to sign on, on to this, I think we stand a good chance because people need entertainment, man. They need it. It's a vibe. We're in Vegas. Yeah, it's a vibe. And even if they're outside of Vegas, oh, people outside, need yeah, it. You absolutely. know what I mean? They still need it. So anyway, anybody interested in, in, in the coalition that, that I'm starting, please hit us up on entertainmentfirst at juno.com. That's entertainmentfirst at juno.com. Now that's one word. E-N-T-E-R-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T-F-I-R-S-T. Do not separate the word. Entertainmentfirst at juno.com or you can hit us at Entertainmentfirst.com. <laughs> Entertainmentfirst.com. But, you know, let's get this coalition going because I think That's it'll help. Good, yeah. We need to help each other, you know. That's you got a venue and you know another guy can do that venue, you know. We're going to need, I, I know a lot of people are going to not like me saying this, but we need to kind of knock out this middleman stuff because that's what's keeping us out of work. Uh, I don't know about you. I have I have some pretty good high level work, and uh, I just know I've had some some problems with some of the agents that I've had who think that I should be paying them even when they're not working. Okay, so if you're interested, once what I said again, hit us up at entertainmentfirst at juno dot com or entertainmentfirst.com. and uh, you know I'd like to hear your opinions on this. Okay. You're, have you considered the lady what's going on? As far as the uh, corporate gigs or banquet? Oh, the banquet gigs? Yeah. yeah. You, uh, okay, let's say there's a, I don't know, a party of 300 people yeah. or 200. Right now it's not that much because right. of the COVID 19, but the, the virus. But they, <clears throat> they still have a party of 80s or. So anyway. The, the, they want uh, a band, you know, the, the person that wants to do, hey, I would like a band here. So the manager of the, of the corporate has a list, and he'll say, he'll do this. Uh, Mr. Leon, yes, uh, I'm having a party, it's something that, you know, we need yeah. a band. How much do you charge for an hour or two sets, whatever? Such and so, right, you give them the, okay, whoa, well, Mr. Ron does it for less. Yeah. Is there any way you can match that and we'll bring you in? Yeah, an agent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, an agent. That's cutting the, the middle man. So that's, yeah, it's, it's, that's it's, right. It's dirty. It's, it's a dirty business. It's a dirty business, man. And you know the funny, that's why I'm trying to say, we need to come, we need to have a musician's coalition. Not a, u a union, no. But a coalition. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been listening to the one and only, that's right, the world famous Mr. Carlitos Leon, percussionist, and my man who was one of my um, soldiers at the showboat. And you know that, man, when they knocked that building down, we went down with it. You know that, right? Yeah, we were on the marquee, yeah, that, going down on it, man. To, you know. You know Ron Knight and the good, fabulous though. days. It was also a good day. I mean, it was, yeah. it was 
But like I say, Ron, I like your point about helping each other. That's. Yeah, I was going to ask you real quick. I know we're out of, mm -hmm. Do you know a gentleman by the name of Stick? He plays a drum for In Effect. Yeah. You know, he's helping a lot. Like, you, you're doing yeah. it. He's helping a lot. Of, he's got his own, uh, uh, I think it's called Stick FM Radio. Right. But he plays music <clears throat> of artists to help them. Right. You know what I'm saying? He plays as if they have a, a single, whatever. Right. Original. And and he'll play it, even friends from Chicago, from all over. Yeah. He's all over now. Right. And he was telling me that. I told him, I've seen him the other day and, and talked to him. And he goes, yeah, we have to help each other. Yeah, like you were saying. And Stick does it through the, you know, that FM, you know, radio he does. Radio he does, yeah. He plays, you know, if you have a song here, look, yeah. this is Mr. Ron Nye from, and they exactly. go play it. Yeah. And people, hey, who's that guy? I love it. You know? and, and that's that's <laughs> what we're going to do here, too. You know, we just, look, uh, John and I and uh, Kimberly, who uh, produces my show, we uh, we are looking for new talent too as well. You know, right. of course we have famous talent coming in. What's the guy that you had coming in this weekend? His car was something happened with his car. Yeah, uh, Norman Carter. Norman Carter, Norman Carter from the uh, Delphonics. Um, we and a lot of other people. I mean, I'm even going to go reach out to Stevie Wonder. I've been knowing him for a long time, and I'm sure they'll they'll find their way. If it, if they're in in here in Las Vegas, they will. But I just want to put out the word: we are looking for new talent. Uh, people who write songs, people who sing songs and perform those songs. Like I said, you can hit us up at entertainmentfirst.com or entertainmentfirst at juno.com. We are looking for that new talent. Um, and uh, this is a place that you can and probably do it. Also, we will have the Music and Fashion Expo coming up again too as well, wow. where you'll be able to perform, you'll be able to make a video, and we will play your music. So if you're interested, hit us up on entertainmentfirst at juno.com or entertainmentfirst.com. Let us know your thoughts on that, and um, we'd love to have you on the show. Okay? In the meantime, you have been listening to the Entertainment First podcast, where it's all about the music and more. My host, Mr. John E. Williams, okay. and my guest tonight, the one and only... Carlos Litos. Pleasure to Carlitos meet you. Carlitos Leon. Okay? I had a great time. And of course, my producer of this show, my lovely wife, the Kimberly. Lovely. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate your viewership. Honest. We do appreciate it. Without you, we wouldn't exist. In the meantime, we love you. Ain't that right, John? Yes, we do. You yeah. love him? Give him a kiss, man. What's wrong with you? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good night. Hey, God, boy, I tell you something else. <laughs> this boy is something else. <laughs> There's my kiss! <laughs>